Hey everyone, what is the crack? My name is Lawrence and this is my review of the Feel VR Pedals 1. During the last few days I've gotten to know these pedals quite well and to be honest I'm pleasantly surprised and frankly a little bit shocked. This video is made up of several sections which you can see on the left of your screen right now. If you'd like to jump to a particular section I have all the timestamps at the top of the description below. While you're down there feel free to give a like and a subscribe. Let's start with build quality. These pedals are heavy, they're really solid and they're quite professionally built. The various bolts might need a quick tighten, for me the brake pedal face came loose after a few hours of use but that was easily fixed with the tools provided. These are hand built so I'd expect something like that. Let's compare them visually to the Club Sport pedals. The styling of these two is quite different. Where Fanatec opt for a very clean, uncomplicated look, Feel VR have styled their pedal faces, pedals and checkered plate in a very recognisable way, making them stand out. It's a lot riskier than Fanatec's design, but it's very easy to modify and customise, unlike the Fanatec. The Feel VR pedals are very upright, the pedals are almost perpendicular to the base. This might be in an effort to appeal to a section of the market which uses desk mounted steering wheel setups. However, I used my club sport pedals on a desk for years and never had an issue with the angle of the pedals. I think that they should have angled the pedals a little more as it gives a slightly more natural angle for both desk and rig users. Mounting and setup. When installing the pedals onto my Symmetech K2 rig, I had to put the adjustable pedal plate on my rig to zero degrees. For the club sports I had it at 20 degrees to get the desired angle. Even at zero degrees the Feel VR of pedals still looked very upright and I thought this was going to be a huge negative. But it actually worked out quite well because the pedals felt a bit more like the inverted V3s than the non-inverted ones. I'm still not quite sure why. Despite my initial reservations about the look of the pedals, they appeal to me a lot more and you have to admit they look quite at home in my rig. Software. Software setup is plug and play. Simply plug the pedals in and they get set up without a hitch. They were instantly detected by my games, no additional drivers, really couldn't be simpler. Throttle. Throttle travel is huge, but it feels very nice. It's quite a bit heavier than the club sport pedals. I instantly noticed a massive improvement in my corner exits as I had great control over the amount of throttle input I was applying. The throttle pedal was a very pleasant surprise. The throw is so long that I did have to set as dead zone. This allowed me to reach 100% throttle without having to press the pedal fully. In the long run, a simple adjustment with a spanner shortens the throw slightly. But since I added a little dead zone, I don't really feel the need to have to do this. Clutch. The clutch weight is good, heavier than the throttle, lighter than the brake. Dead zone was needed at the very start as I tend to rest my foot on the clutch slightly, like in a real car. The clutch bite point is a little bit disappointing, but better than the Club Sport V1 but not as good as the V3s. It's just too late and it's barely noticeable. I tried to adjust it but couldn't make it much better. Brakes. The brake is actually really really good, like really really good. It has a great weight on the dampers and is very easy to get used to. I found myself controlling my lockups very well. This was always going to be the most crucial part of the success of these pedals, but they've done a phenomenal job and I actually don't need adjustment on the damping whatsoever. There's a bit of flex when braking, when you brake hard you see the other pedals moving slightly. This flex is visually noticeable but doesn't affect the performance of the unit. I've noticed similar flex on rigs with individually mounted Husingfeld Sprint pedals. The Fanatex have their own base plate which is super rigid. The Feel VR setup does lack that rigidity even though it has the base plate. I really miss my rumble motor on the brake. I like this for lockups and ABS interference. However, my braking is actually really good in game with the Feel VR pedals and I don't really feel like I need the rumble motor as much as I did with my Fanatex. When setting up the brake inputs, I notice that the brake input dies off even if you don't back off the pedal. Again, this isn't noticeable in game and it may even be advantageous. When releasing the brake, something was clicking at first. I ignored it and it went away after 30 minutes of use. I think that something just wasn't assembled right and popped back into place with use. Out of the box, the throw before the dampers kick in is way too long and not progressive enough, but easy to get used to and easy to modify. There's one size 13 spanner tool provided with the pedals, 
but you need a second in order to make the adjustments. Once I adjusted this, the throw before the dampers kick in was halved, and even my friends who tried them out were very, very impressed. Despite the minor issues, I can honestly say that the brake is far better than the Fanatec V3 pedals, which is the number one reason someone might buy these over the Fanatecs. This is a deal clincher for me, and they will be replacing my club sport pedals. I think I really need to try these side by side again with the Fanatec V3 pedals with the performance kit, but from memory I can't remember them being this good. And honestly, I can't remember the Hosingfeld sprints being this good either. The curved pedal faces are good. I thought that they might feel odd, but I didn't notice the curve through my feet when driving. In my unboxing video, I remarked that the bolts didn't sit flush with the curved pedal faces, but the bolts are not an issue at all either. The checkered footplate looks a little bit dated for me, but I have to admit that it gives a nice feel while driving and a great reference point for when your foot needs to leave the pedal and come back, say when you're left foot braking or heel towing. The pedals are extremely sensitive to pressure from my feet. This can only be a good thing as the potentiometers and load cells used are not only visually pleasing, but also function extremely well. It's not very clear how to adjust the distance between the pedals, and this can't be done while the pedals are mounted to your rig. The way the pedals are mounted means that there's lots of flex while heel towing. My pedals may be a bit far apart, and it's not actually noticeable while driving, but it would be a concern for me in the long run. My final thoughts, well, I was kind of expecting to have to do a very difficult review with extremely harsh reality checks for the Field VR team. However, these pedals are worth €180 Euro or $199 all day long. I deliberately use the Fanatec pedals as a comparison because let's face it, that's where the target market's preference currently resides. The Fanatec V3s start at twice the price, €360 Euro or $360 and they're a bit dead without the additional 30 euro or 30 dollar brake performance kit from Fanatec. I'm extremely impressed with what is fundamentally the single most important piece of sim racing hardware, your brake pedal. They've obviously put a serious amount of effort into it, and I'm very surprised that I was able to notice significant improvement over my club sport pedals within minutes of driving. These pedals cost half the price, yet I dare say that I actually think they're even better than the Fanatec V3s. The quality of these pedals makes me extremely excited about the prospect of their direct drive wheel. For a company with no previous portfolio, this is actually a very serious effort at taking on the sim racing market. It's not a perfect product, but it's definitely amazing value. And it makes them a serious contender when it comes to choosing your next pedal set. Would I upgrade from the V3s? I'm not sure. Would I buy them over the V3s? Definitely. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it useful or even remotely interesting, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe and ensure that you click the little bell and get notified every time I release a new video. I'm Lawrence and I will chat to you later.